because we are busy birthing something, there will be a, a number of things that we are trying to avoid that will still happen. The, the picture we are holding is important so that we know from that picture we keep on developing things that will not do that will look like that picture so in case there is a picture that we are bearing so somebody might be asking me what is the picture that we are bearing for this particular season we want to do this our mission has always been the same it is to transform and to develop those ones that are called out into those ones that are calling out. Now, I want to show you something here that is important. Every person that is there at here, you have been called out. Because we did not come here because we were, we were you know, uh, so much of conscious that we came by ourselves. Some of us, we came by invitation. Some of us, we came by evangelism. Some of us, we came because we, we, we heard it and we wanted to come and see for ourselves. And so the idea behind our coming here is the fact that we are called out. But now, we need to be transformed into those ones that are going to call out. So how are we going to call out? That is why we want to raise prophetic intercessors. And that is why we want to raise apostolic teachers. Because, listen to me, our two assignment as people that are called by God is to go to a place where we are going to call out. Now, if you are called by God, you need to be a prophetic intercessor. Intercessor is a prayerful person. And uh, the idea of being prophetic as an intercessor is being able to watch for spiritual issues. To be able to pick up God's concern, God's worry, God's burden, God's counsel, God's wisdom, God's judgment for what he has ordained for our time. Is it making sense? So as a prophetic intercessor, you are supposed to be able to be having prophetic dreams, prophetic visions, prophetic words, prophetic warnings. You are supposed to be understanding the scripture prophetically that will inspire how you are going to pray. Are you moving with me? Now, the moment you are inspired in terms of how to pray, when you get direction from the place of the prophetic, from the, from the prophetic realm, you begin to adopt it as your compass, as your navigator for very important issues that you need to begin to tell. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, after you've done that, you are going to need to become an apostolic teacher. What is an apostolic teacher? Is the one because they have seen it prophetically and have prayed about it. They have seen the need of having to educate a people to move in that direction. Are you with me now? So, for example, what I'm doing now is apostolic teaching. I have seen things in the place of prayer. And because I have seen things in the place of prayer, we have been praying concerning these particular issues. And after that, we pray concerning these particular issues. We are seeing it needful for us to preach about it in order that we must develop people in the direction that God has given to us prophetically and that he has sustained in our hearts through the place of prayer. Are you with me now? Amen. So you are a very important person. You are a, a, you are a militant, a soldier in, in, in the army of Christ. You are a soldier in the army of Christ. Now, I want to quickly try to educate us as soldiers. There are two ways of being able to pray as a soldier. Number one, number one, please. You pray because you have seen it spiritually. You pray because you saw it in the spirit. I, I will give you an example now. Can you please go to the book of Kings? I will give you an example from the book of Kings. I will give you an example from the book of Kings. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me at the book of Kings? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like for us to go to uh, the book of First Kings, please. First Kings.
the book of first kings please Number 41. It says, Then Elijah said to King Ahab, Now go and eat. I hear the law of rain approach you. Now I want to ask you a question. If you heard the law of rain approach you, and you was hearing it from the natural, should it not be that when Elijah was hearing it, then Ahab should also hear it? Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you are hearing the streets? Amen. So it means it's not a spiritual thing. You are hearing it in the natural. Amen. But if I now say to you that I hear the sound, the roar of rain, and you are trying to listen and you are not hearing what I am hearing, it obviously assumes that I'm not hearing from the realm that you are hearing. Is that true now? Amen. Okay. Now, because that is true, we need to read here. While Ahab went to eat, Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Temer, where he bowed down to the ground with his head in his knees. There is a type of prayer where your head is in your knees. Hear this. He said to his servant, now look at this, he says to his servant, go look towards the sea. Go look towards the sea. Remember, if you are looking at the sea, you can see the reflection of what? Of the sky. So when you are saying, go to his servant, go look towards the sea. I want to ask you a question. Was he saying, must look spiritually or physically? So if you are saying that the servant was supposed to look physically, it's important for us. It means as a prophetic intercessor, while you are in the place of prayer, Concerning things you have heard or seen spiritually or encountered spiritually, you are also going to look, need to look for them for their physical evidence. Are you with me now? Amen. There are two ways of watching. Number one, you watch in the spirit concerning things that you are hearing, that you are seeing, that you are encountering, that you are experiencing in the spirit realm. But also you are looking for their expression. You are looking for their materialization. You are looking for their manifestation. Where? In the natural. So he had heard rain in the spirit. But there was no rain in the natural. So this is what he said. Go look. The seven went and returned, saying, I didn't see anything. The seven times, seven times in all Elijah told him to go and look. The seventh time he returned and said, I see a little cloud, not bigger than a man's hand, coming up from the sea. Then Elijah ordered the servant, go to King Ahab and tell him to get into his chariot and to get back home before the rain stops him. So, what does this mean? Look at this. You may see things in the spirit and there might not be evidence of them physically. But the way, the way to force them, to force them to materialize, to manifest, to find expression is by what? Is by prayer. Not any type of prayer. A type of prayer where your head is in your knees. You know what does it mean for your head to be in knees? It means whatever constitutes and metaphorically expresses head and metaphorically expresses knees. When you bring those two metaphors together, that's where you find the meaning. The head is for thinking, the eyes are for seeing, the ears are for hearing, the nose is for smelling or discerning, the mouth is for tasting. Are you with me now? Now you know, that expresses your prophetic stature. The knees, they, they represent two things. Number one, prayer. Number two, they represent surrendering. So in other words, he had surrendered his vision. He had surrendered his thinking, his seeing, his prophetic and carnal experiences to the place of prayer. After Elijah surrendered to the place of prayer, he said to his servant, go watch, go watch what I see. Now the question is, what, what, what do you see? Do you know what I see? I see an army of warriors' eyes. 
and army of prayer, prophetic intercessors rise. I see prayer calls everywhere. I see an army of apostolic teachers, men that are going to preach the truth without compromise. They are not going to surrender to liberalism. Men that are not going to surrender to, to, to what is secular. They are not going to, to be hated because any man that surrenders in prayer cannot surrender before men. Seven times he sent him. He kept on sending him. Go, 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 go. On the seventh time, he now began to see it come to pass. Now let me show you this. Did he see rain or did he hear a roar of rain? Or did he hear dozens? Huh? He heard a roar. Do you know what is a roar? A roar is a torrent of rain. Thunderstorms and rain. That's what he heard. That's what he heard. But when the person came with a testimony, what, what was the testimony like? He said, I see a small cloud. He says, he, the clouds have not been fully covered with cloudiness. It's, it's only starting now. There's something starting in our midst. Something is starting with prayer. Something is starting in our midst. Something that is going to affect the community is starting in our midst. Something that is going to affect the church. Something that is going to affect the city. Something that will affect the country. Something that will affect the continent of Africa. Something that will affect the globe is starting in our midst. It is starting with us. It is starting with us. And how does it start? It starts very small. There is a small fire inside of us. That's why the Bible says, strengthen what remains. Whatever that remains now, what we are seeing, we must strengthen it. Hallelujah. Amen. We must strengthen it. There is something we are seeing. I want us to pray God. We are praying for, for what we are seeing. We, we, we are seeing a revival of prophetic intercessors. People that are able to, to pick up dreams. I mean, people that are able to have dreams and pick up their interpretation. People that are able to have visions and know what they mean. People that can see the direction, the counsel of God. People that can be able to consult the Lord and be able to get answers concerning the issue. I want to show you the second one. The first one is you see in the spirit and you pray until it manifests. The first one is what? I'm not hearing you. No, you know, listen. If something is going to rise and we are the first one, how many of you know that the first thing is very important? Okay. It's called the prototype. The first uh, Toyota car that was made, the first one is called the prototype. The first BMW car that was made is called the prototype. The first Mercedes, the first Bentley, the first portfolio, the first Jaguar that was made is called the prototype. The prototype is very potent. Even your amen, you hear? Listen, we are exporting something to the world. We are not going to have to take it to the world. When we take small amen, no, no, no. You must get serious with your amen. You must get serious. You must know you are the first. You are very important to the eyes of God. For what God wants to take to the world, you, you, your posture, your gesture, listen to me. You must position yourself like a soldier ready to be exported by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I now ask, I, I will tell you now, and I will, I, I, will, I will wait to see if the first group of people that our assignment is on, if they are fully understanding the assignment. Listen, the first duty of a prophetic intercessor you see it in the spirit you pray until it happens in the natural Amen. where do you see it in the spirit you pray until what happens until it manifests in the manifest. until it comes to the nature are you following with me Amen. i want to show you the second instrument of the prophetic intercessor the book of habakkuk the book of habakkuk please the book of habakkuk the second instrument of the prophetic intercessor. Is somebody going? Is somebody learning? Amen. I, I said your amen as a prototype is very important. Amen. The book of Habakkuk. Are you there? Amen. Habakkuk, we're going to read chapter number one. Habakkuk, chapter number one. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of Habakkuk chapter number one. We, we, we are not 
are staying here, we are going somewhere. Amen. We are not staying here, we are going somewhere. Amen. Amen. We are not going to be ordinary. Amen. We, we will not remain the same anymore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you receive it? Amen. I receive. Now we are going to do much better. We are going to need to do much better. How many of us are receiving it? I receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you there at the book of Habakkuk now? Amen. Amen. Are you at the book of Habakkuk chapter 1? Amen. Amen. We're going to read verse number 2. Hallelujah. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse number 2. Hear this. It, I would like even to start from verse 1. It says, this is the message that the Lord had revealed, that the Lord had revealed to the prophet Habakkuk. Verse number 2. Oh Lord, how long must I call for help before you listen, before you save us from this violence? If you understand in the book of Habakkuk, uh, the nation of Israel was under the imperialism of Babylon. Are you with me now? Amen. And so they were a violent people against the Israelites. So now he saw how the people were violent and he asked God concerning what he saw with his natural eye. Are you getting the difference? Amen. Elijah saw it in the spirit, prayed for it to manifest. But Habakkuk saw it in the natural and he prayed for God to do something about it. He, he did what? He saw it in the natural and prayed for God to do something about it. Amen. So a prophetic intercessor, intercessor has two roles. Number one, you pray concerning things you hear where? In the spirit until they manifest where? In the natural. Number two, you pray concerning things that are already happening where? In the natural. Until you get what? A supernatural solution. Amen. For example, I will make an example for you. If you see your child is physically sick now, do you need to ask God if there's a sickness? Or do you need to ask God for solution because you can already see sickness? When we are going to vote, for example, 29 May uh, 2024, the South African elections will be taking place. Do you need to have a vision concerning the votes or are you going to need to pray into it because you can already see, you know what is going to happen. Amen. 